Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Yes, I'm Ann Meeker. I'm with the Popbox Foundation. And before that, I was a congressional staffer working for as a director of constituent services for an office in the Northeast. So today's sessions are going to build on what we covered yesterday and go a little bit deeper into the skills, landscape, and roles that will define your congressional internship. So guys, we have an amazing panel of staffers with us today from congressional offices around the country. So while their, their names might not be actually on the door, these are the people that work to bring the members' vision to life and keep the wheels of government and the legislative branch running. So each of these panelists that are with us today has a traditional role in a congressional office. So they're each going to share what a day in the life of their role looks like, what projects they might assign to interns working with them, or what tasks they might supervise interns working on, and then their best advice to all of you as you start your congressional careers. So let me caveat that just really briefly to say, and you're gonna hear this from me, you're gonna hear this from other people ad nauseum today, that every congressional office works differently. Uh, so your team may use different titles, they may split up tasks between roles a little bit differently. So as with everything that we're going to go through today, this is the high level starting point, And we hope that these are tips that are going to be um, helpful, but they're no substitute for paying attention in your new office, listening to your intern coordinator and asking great questions. So we are going to start at the top of the traditional Congress command structure with the chief of staff. So I am so pleased to introduce Chastney Lewis, chief of staff to representative Maxine Waters of the California 43rd. Chastney, take it away. Hi, Ann. Thanks so much. I'm really excited to be here today to talk to um, this, this amazing group of um, interns or potential interns. Um, um, I am tasked with talking a little bit about what happens in a congressional office sort of on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I couldn't have said it any better. It is literally um, no one day is the same. There also is never really a dull day. Um, I think that as an intern coming into a new office, it's really important to understand sort of who your report is, who you're going to be working most closely with. Um, and a lot of times I understand people may not be comfortable asking those kinds of questions, um, but I'd encourage all of the interns who are maybe entering into an office to um, be open in that way, be, take that kind of initiative and be inquisitive. Um, so I'll back up. So for us in our office, there is um, a, quite a bit going on all the time. Um, there are a lot of moving parts to a congressional office. And um, I tell my interns all the time, your internship is going to be as much or as little as you put into it, your experience. And so um, I think coming into an office eager and um, you know, ready to, to work, no task being too big or too small, and really having an open mind about um, you know, producing and, and giving good work product. Um, I think one of the first things that our interns do when they come into the office is um, I, I make sure to introduce everyone to the entire team so that the team can orient themselves also to the, to the intern and the intern can feel welcome to reach out and um, connect with staff and build a rapport since, you know, you, know, you will be working in the office with them. Um, I think also trainings are really great. That's one of the first things that we do in our office. Um, the Staff Academy for the House is really great at helping to assist our, our interns with various trainings and um, writing workshops, constituent mail correspondence workshops. They have a, we have a lot of resources um, available to our employees, including interns. And so a day in the life is, um, it, it can range from answering phones and now virtually greeting constituents, or um, you may be, you know, walk, walking to a committee hearing with the member. I think some of the transferable skills that exist, no matter what office you are in, um, you know, I think that we have, you have to, interns have to really pay attention to the office culture, they need to understand sort of the, the landscape in the office, again, who you are reporting to, who your direct supervisor is, or person who is sort of kind of helping to guide you um, as you matriculate through the office. 
Um, I think staying professional at all times is extremely important. Um, we've had not just our office, but I've heard stories about, um, you know, horror stories really about how interns have not been professional or just have not paid attention to those types of um, um, policy type of issues. You should get a handbook when you first come into the office um, to kind of outline some of the office policies. Um, I think also what's really important is to have an interest, have an interest in something that you want to work on and be vocal about that when the time comes for you to share that. Don't be afraid, you know, try to um, really take advantage of your short time in, in a congressional office. So um, maximize it and ultimately leverage the experience that you've had, um, hopefully into maybe a full-time position or something off the hill, but definitely make your time in that office work for you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jazzy. That That's fantastic and great advice for the interns. Two things I just want to pick up on just to reemphasize. You mentioned the Staff Academy resources. Those are incredible. So once you are an intern with your um, with your House or Senate login credentials, definitely go check out Staff Academy's resources. They have um, schedules for in-person trainings and then video trainings that you can watch anytime um, that, that are really going to help out. And they're really a phenomenal resource for you as you're starting your internship. So thanks so much for flagging that. So one of the challenges for, for Chasney, for others in her role, um, is coordinating everything that the member has, has in mind between the district and the DC offices. So we kind of hear about those often as two separate teams. You have your DC team, then you have your district team. Um, and since I mentioned I am a former district staffer, I am going to exercise host privilege to actually start us with the district side. Uh, district doesn't always get all the love that I wish it did. So I am going to uh, ask Mr. David Wirt, please turn on his camera. Perfect. Thanks, Mr. Wirt. So we are staying with the district. Um, Stewart is the district director for Representative Bob Latta of the Ohio 5th. Going to tell you a little bit about his role, life in the district. Dave, take it away. Well, thank you. I think Chesney really summed up very well all the, uh, the perspective of, uh, from certainly the chief of staff, uh, the D.C. side, and, uh, but it, how it also flows out here to the district. Uh, again, it's, it's interesting because each district, as Chesney said, is quite different, um, and it's going to be something different every day in your routine as well. Out here, for example, we're in the 5th District, Northwest Ohio, and it's a heavily agricultural, but at the same time, we have uh, almost 70,000 uh, manufacturing jobs. So there is diversity out here, and that makes your day. And it, it, if you're the kind of person that likes everything kind of ordered and structured, it's good because you start from a plan, but you also have to have a little bit of enjoyment of the buzz of reacting to a developing situation, uh, you know, fast breaking. And that's what keeps it interesting, uh, and hopefully, you'll find as an intern, you're, you're an integral part of that. You know, we've been asked to kind of describe the day in the life. Well, the, the day in the life also is somewhat dependent upon the cycle we're in in Congress. Uh, it depends on the season, I'll put it that way. If we're in August or even a district work week, uh, the focus comes back here to the district. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in internships and, and you're probably already in one now, but it may be continuing in a, in a different type, I'd strongly recommend a district internship as well because it's a great time. It fits in well with school oftentimes, but it's also a chance to see the member in action with uh, the, the people he represents, constituents out here. What you're going to be doing because is what we're doing. It's constituent calls, which are, are, happen both here and DCC, but it's a wide range of calls, but also the casework piece. We run our casework from district. Again, as uh, Chesney already said, each, each office is different in how they do that. We have people who do casework, but also do outreach at the same time. Some offices are just casework only and outreach only. But again, the outreach piece is an important part, the representation when the member can't be out here. And we're also uh, the eyes and ears on the ground to keep track of what's going on here when he can't be here. It's kind of, uh, I was, my background was uh, as a military and it was an attache at the end and was kind of the same thing. I make the analogy there uh, in an embassy overseas. I'm the eyes and ears. Uh, I'm trying to help people and uh, it's representational work. But outside the daily engagement with the public, there's also special programs we run here, such as the Surface Academy nomination process. Uh, we do that again from the district, uh, the Congressional Art Competition. Uh, and there are a number of special programs like that. And depending on when you come into the offices, you may be very much a, a part of that. Uh, you'll also have the opportunity to go out and uh, on events with the district reps and, and see the interaction firsthand with constituents out there. 
So, so that's kind of the routine in general, but I, I wanted to highlight the importance of your roles as an uh, intern. You know, we're going to check, first of all, to make sure that you can kind of think on your feet. But as soon as we're comfortable with that, one of the first places you may end up on are the phones. And you think, okay, that's kind of mundane. But I want to highlight, that's probably the most important uh, spot here in the office because that means you're the voice of the member. That's the, you're the first person the public comes in contact. And how you handle that is, is critically important. So um, they'll remember the professionalism there. And, and, and you know we'll be watching closely initially too to make sure we're comfortable with your, both your savviness and your responsiveness. But uh, that, that's a key role. Uh, you know, as my member says, we're out here to fight bureaucrats and cut red tape. And because and, oftentimes the people calling are people who've had a problem with the system, uh, maybe have not been treated properly by it, uh, by an agency or, or part of the bureaucracy. Or sometimes it's just simply they can't navigate the complexity because I have a hard time getting my hands around all the uh, issues that various agencies handle. So you can imagine what a constituent does who may be just touching that once for the first time. So you're an important part of that. And, and your satisfaction at the end of the day, especially in the district, is going to come knowing that you were helpful to someone. And, you know, in these days of call trees, we try to answer every call and get right back to them. Not all offices can do that because of the number of calls coming in. But you'd be surprised at the difference it makes, even when the intern says, well, hey, I'm just an intern here. But somebody is going to be very happy that you spent the time to talk with them and listen to that problem. So it's key. Um, the other thing I want to stress is we're here to help constituents regardless of what their political views might be. And there's a lot of calls that come in that are just pure elected politics. We don't do that here. We're a federal office and we try to uh, help them understand we can talk about issues that might be one side of the aisle versus the other, but not uh, elective natures. But it's, it's, it's always sometimes interesting to say we're not political in that sense here. And, and some people find it strange. I don't even ask interns, uh, you know, what party you're from? Uh, what are your political views? All I say is Look at the member statement, look at what he stands for, make sure you're comfortable with that because his name's on the door. And I think Jesse said the same thing or somebody else referred to that is, is whose name's on the door. And we're here to uh, help the member uh, navigate uh, his, his relationships with constituents. But the, um, I think the important thing is here, we want you to see how, how the system works both in, in, in what's written down, but also how the sausage is really made. And this is your opportunity to do that. Uh, you can see it both uh, in, in practice and theory and, and, and in how it actually works here. Uh, you know, I kind of sum up with the, the piece of advice for interns and I actually, rather than me giving the advice, I asked a couple of the interns here. So uh, what would you say to, to somebody coming in? And uh, one of the interns popped up immediately who just been on a, a pretty long session with the phones is don't take anything personally. And because uh, again, people will call in, some people most of the time will be uh, either under stress or, or having a problem. That's why they're calling here. Uh, seldom they call to say, hey, you're doing a great job. So always keep in mind that you can internalize it. And, and at the end, if you help them navigate through that, you, you really made a difference. And the idea is here for you to see theoretically leadership in action. Uh, hopefully you'll get some time if you're in the district, especially in the summer to see the member out there. And that's one of the things. We, this is not just a one-way street, you know, you know low-cost labor from uh, an intern here to take care of all the, the, the nit noids. The nit noids are important, devil's in the details. But our role here is to make sure that you all um, get an insight into how the government works and how, how the district works. So again, you're a key point of it. And I don't want to take any more than my time allotted, but um, I'll be available for questions as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, David. That is also just fantastic advice. Uh, I really just wanted to just emphasize again your point about uh, folks in the district being the eyes and ears of the member. That there is so much that you can learn just from talking to constituents, whether you're in the district or DC on the phones, checking the mail. There's a lot of good information there that's not only helpful to your team, but it's also just really interesting on a human level. People tell you incredible stories, but really share themselves really personally with you in a way that's I find it really inspiring. Um, so on that note, let's actually dig in a little bit deeper to the constituent side of this. Um, so we'll stay with the district. I could have Marvin turn on his camera. Awesome, all right. Marvin is a caseworker with the Office of Congressman Seth Moulton. In full disclosure, Marvin and I used to work together. Uh, Marvin, if you would tell us a little bit about casework. Good morning, everyone. Um... So I work on the casework side, and I would describe the casework team as being the front lines of the congressional office. Um, when folks come to us, uh, they're coming to us after they've hit rock bottom. They, they've, they have no other options. 
And so when they come to us, they're really looking for uh, solutions. Um, in our office, our casework team is spread up into different issue areas. Um, I manage social security and Medicare. Um, we have someone on the team who does, handles immigration and housing. Um, there's a, one staffer who handles miscellaneous cases, IRS, um, and other things like that. And so a day in the life of a caseworker is uh, coming into the office, uh, checking our emails, uh, particularly in the morning to make sure that um, any agencies that we've reached out to on behalf of the constituents um, have responded to us, uh, replying and uh, calling and reaching out to constituents who have uh, left us voicemails. Um, the casework team has to be incredibly responsive uh, because, I mean, you can imagine if, if we're not, then that reflects poorly on uh, the, the team as a whole. Uh, and so I, like Ann mentioned, uh, I worked under Ann. Ann had this wonderful philosophy, which was uh, the role of the casework team is to sort of work yourself out of the job. Uh, when folks reach out to us on the casework team, uh, they're, like I mentioned, they're looking for solutions. And sometimes we can't solve their issue right away. Sometimes it's a bigger systemic issue. And so uh, one of the things that our office does is a, a great deal of research to find out wh what's going on, what caused the issue, right? Not only are we addressing it, but we're also trying to figure out, is there a greater systemic issue that's causing this individual to come into the office and ask for help? And so we do a great deal of research and we assign a lot of projects and we rely on our interns a lot. So I would say for our interns, uh, the advice that I would have is to be as confident as you can be, right? Fake it till you make it. <laughs> I understand that you probably come in and it's really nerve wracking and uh, folks are, it, it's a real high tempo situation to be in. But I would say be as confident as you can be, uh, fake it till you make it. Uh, I would also say that um, just to echo what Chasney and David uh, mentioned, uh, be ready to uh, to help, right? Be eager to help. Uh, be 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 as responsive to the constituents as you can be, and ask questions. Um, why, one thing that I find working in this field is that uh, folks are learning as they go along, uh, and so it's okay to ask questions. But I would also say it's okay to give suggestions and and and, and take initiative um, as well. So don't be scared to make mistakes, especially if you're communicating with uh, your uh, with uh, your intern coordinator or staffer. Um, so, for example, some of the projects that I would uh, assign to interns, um, we in our district uh, had uh, we have a, a lot of uh, seniors and elderly folks in our, our our district, and they're always calling in about the price of uh, prescription drugs. And so um, I had one intern. Uh, look into something called a pharmacy benefit manager or pharmacy benefit uh, managers, PBMs. They're sort of like uh, the middlemen uh, between um, pharmacies and um, healthcare plans. And through that research, we found out a lot um, and it actually really helped us change um, how we talked about um, healthcare policy and drug pricing. And uh, the intern was able to present their uh, findings to the team and also suggest legislation uh, to uh, our congressman, to the member. Uh, so we really, uh, especially on our case for team in the district side, we really do rely on our interns and we um, like to give engaging pro uh, projects so that they're getting something out of it, but something that actually does help our, our, our office and the constituents. And uh, another project uh, uh, I worked on, just to give you an example, is uh, in, our, in our district also, we're dealing with uh, the price of uh, or the cost of living in our district as well. And so one of the things that um, uh, I uh, that I uh, gave to one of our interns is uh, we were trying to find out if we could get social work students to be placed all across our district right, from universities so that they can be placed at certain, um, certain uh, nonprofit agencies or housing organizations where they can do one-on-one -on -one casework with constituents who are looking for housing. Um, and, and kind of working them through that process. And that was a really engaging um, project. We did end up uh, getting someone that was really qualified and it really helped out uh, one of the larger agencies in our district and actually helped beef up their, uh, their ability to provide for our, uh, our, our, our folks in our district that are dealing with uh, homelessness. So 
Uh, that's it in a nutshell. That's our um, uh, that's sort of our, our day to day here um, as a caseworker. And again, be confident, ask questions, take initiative, and uh, and if you show those things, then uh, my, someone like myself who works on the casework team will be more willing to give you projects that you know you can take the lead on and actually um, really have a meaningful impact in people's lives. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marvin. Um, those projects are awesome. Again, I can I, I have the privilege of being able to say firsthand how amazing those intern projects were, but I do just want to make sure and circle back to that's something that Chastney said earlier as well, that we just can't emphasize enough here that you're going to get out of this internship what you put into it. So if you really work with your team to show them that you're engaged, that you know no job is too small, that you're really taking an interest even in the nitty gritty detail of what you're doing, that's going to find its way to translate into, into a bigger, more exciting, more interesting project for you. Um, and that's really important. All right, so we've kind of had a quick tour of the district. Uh, we've heard a little bit about the foundations of constituent interactions. So let's kind of look at how those, those filter up and those translate into DC and into the big legislative policy, policy work. So at this point, could I have Rachel Jenkins turn on your camera for me? Awesome. Um, Rachel is the legislative director for Representative Tim Ryan of the Ohio 13th. We have great Ohio representation on this panel today, and I am really excited about it. All right, Rachel, if you could talk about how a lead shop runs, take it away. Great to be here, and, and thanks for having me. I started off as an intern myself, and so I love getting to do stuff like this um, and kind of just talk about some of the things that I've learned and now see as a legislative director. Um, so I started off as an intern and, you know, I was terrified the first day, absolutely terrified. <laughs> um, I think what uh, others have said, the kind of fake it till you make it sometimes is what you do for the first couple weeks. Um, but I absolutely fell in love with what I got to do and kind of the mission of the office. And I think eventually you start to feel a little bit more comfortable and kind of gain that confidence. Um, and so for me, just to kind of share a little bit about my story, and then I'll share kind of some insights and kind of put some pieces together. But um, I, after my internship, then was promoted to staff assistant, and then was able to do each of those junior ledge roles in the office. So it's kind of really neat for me being able to kind of see how all those pieces work together. Um, and then I was promoted to legislative director. And so in my role, you know, I'm really kind of helping keep everybody on uh, the same page and keep us organized. I'm managing the legislative team. And usually that involves working very closely with interns and kind of overseeing them with projects, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And kind of one of my big things there is kind of making sure that we're staying consistent uh, with advancing the Congressman's legislative agenda but also making sure that letters that are getting put together and sent out are reflective of uh, the Congressman's position on certain issues and making sure we don't have any kind of problems along the way. Um, and so as interns, you'll work pretty closely usually with your staff assistant and the, the legislative correspondents. Um, and for me, I love getting to kind of interact and engage our interns with the legislative team. And we'll try to kind of bring them into our legislative team meetings um, and kind of involve them in some of our research projects. Um, Cause I think that kind of helps you just to hear the conversations, hear about how we may be thinking about a, a policy uh, challenge or kind of just that back and forth that the ledge team will have um, as we're kind of thinking through things, which I think is a part of the learning process. And, you know, I really echo what all my colleagues here said that, um, you know, you're such, you play such an invaluable role to the office that you know you are usually sometimes the first, if not the only interaction the public has um, to the, the member or the office, sometimes government itself. Um, and so you really play a valuable role, whether you know, you're assisting with a, a research project or you're on the phone, um, you know, it's no matter what you do, uh, you have a, a big role. Um, so I just kind of wanted to talk about two kind of key insights that I try to share to all the interns that come through our office. Um, and the first is really kind of having a positive attitude. And I think we've kind of each touched upon this kind of throughout here. Um, you know, that are you a team player? Are you engaged? Um, you know, do you take constructive feedback well? 
uh, or are you sitting there complaining about the projects? Um, you know, I think so much about this is building trust. And, you know, as the LD, I'm looking at, you know, can I trust you to do this research project? Um, are you going to follow my instructions? You know, are you going to kind of give it your best effort, even if you are not interested in the subject at all? And I think back to my intern days um, and the LD came to me and wanted me to do a project about broadband policy. And I think I just sat there for a minute with kind of this blank stare because uh, I was a healthcare and foreign policy person, probably care less about broadband. Um, but I realized that that was a really big opportunity for me. And I think the same is true kind of across the board on kind of projects that you all may uh, get from your, your coworkers that you may not know about the subjects, you may not be interested, but it's kind of how you approach that. It's asking questions. Um, it's showing that the no task is too small, just the common theme here, um, but showing that you are willing to just jump in and kind of handle any task and how you help the office. And you know, I think that's especially helpful when we're busy um, and in the DC and the ledge side, you know, our busyness is really kind of the legislative schedule when we're voting, when the members are there. Um, and that's when I'm the busiest. That's usually when we're having our interns be the busiest and kind of help us out. And then just kind of the second thing is uh, be present. Um, and you know, what, what do I mean by this? Um, it's really that we know our interns don't wanna be an intern forever. Um, they're looking for a job and it's important to network. But I think something that I've seen and something that you know I would just encourage and kind of caution that don't become so focused on your next thing um, that you forget to be present and do a good job where you're at currently. Um, and I think that that is so important because you want to strike this balance of, um, you know, showing that you are capable of completing projects, showing up on time, being professional and responsible, um, and then balance that with asking your coworkers for kind of their stories, their journeys, kind of advice on how to get that next step. Um, but don't go to them and ask that if you haven't been doing the work that they've asked you to do. Um, and I think kind of putting all those pieces together, that's really what stands out uh, to me and what makes an intern stand out is when they're willing to chip in, having a positive attitude, and they're really kind of showing that they're invested and engaged um, and putting out a good work product that is useful and helpful. Um, and I think if you kind of connect those pieces and, and find that balance, um, you'll you're gonna be in good shape there. So I'll leave it at that. Also happy to answer questions and I will kick it back to you, Anne. Awesome, thank you so much, Rachel. I think the kind of two word mantra you had for us there, the staying positive and staying present is just one of the, the greatest encapsulations of how to be a successful intern that I've heard. So that's, that's great advice for, for everyone joining us. Okay. So now moving on from to stay in DC. Um, so we have the overall direction from the leadership in the office. Then we have the district coordination. We have the casework. We have everything that's going on in the legislative side. But none of that really matters. None of that really sinks in unless the office can tell constituents about what, what they're doing. So with that, I would love to introduce Susan Curran. Susan, if you want to go ahead and turn on your camera who is the communications director for the um, select, House Select Committee on Modernization of Congress. So not only can Susan tell us a little bit about what it's like to run a communication shop for a congressional office, she can also tell us a little bit about what it's like to work for a committee and especially a committee as unique as ModCom. Susan, take it away. Hello everyone. So yes, um, as it was mentioned, I'm currently a communications director for the Select Committee on the Modernization of Congress, with which actually Congressman Lada is on. Um, but I also have spent over six years in communication shops for house offices. So um, I've seen both sides of it. So as you know, everyone else kind of mentioned, no two days are the exact same. Um, but as a communications director, you are responsible um, for really having your hands on any form of external communication. So anything that a constituent or um, the general American public are seeing. So, you know, if they're, if you have your boss that's back in the district, that's going to consist of, you know, setting up lots of local events. Um, so it's going to be talking points, things of that nature, placing local stories. And when they're in DC, again, that's floor speeches, um, you know, op-ed placements, um, making sure that their legislation is getting proper implications that people understand in the district what they're doing. 
Um, this also comes down to things like website management and social media and kind of, you know, anything that the public is going to see about your boss. So um, I often think of myself as a generalist and you kind of really need to work really closely with the legislative shop and the constituent outreach people um, to make sure that you understand, you know, everything that's going on. Um, so it really just depends where your boss is at and what is going on, what your kind of typical day looks like. Um, I think some important things to note between a uh, district or a uh, working for an individual member versus a committee is that you kind of um, are more of a specialist. You're less of a generalist when you're in a committee. Um, you're typically focused on a very specific issue and you're working with lots of DC or beat reporters um, that are focused on that. So it's a really cool place that you can kind of really um, double down on something that you're really interested in um, versus I think, you know, when you're in a district office, you kind of need to have uh, your ear to the ground and be aware of everything that's going on, um, you know, locally and nationally that could impact your constituents. So um, very different experiences and both very cool uh, in their own right. Um, so projects, I typically give interns that are really important. Um, so every single, pretty much every office and every committee is going to have some kind of morning daily clips. Um, those are really common intern tasks you may be asked to do, and they're extremely important. Um, I know they can be monotonous since I think some people overlook them, but that is something that every member of your senior staff and your member will read. Um, and so, you know, I notice when interns pay attention to details and do a good job, that means I know that's a trusted intern that I can give better, better, better and bigger projects to. Um, other things are typically, you know, once I get to know them better and if they have interest in comms, I have them draft social media um, or help me do research research on maybe reporters that may be interested in certain issues that your member or your committee is working on. Um, and I guess my advice, I don't know, it seems pretty similar to the other people's, but I think attitude, attitude is everything and how you do anything is how you do everything. So, you know, as they've mentioned that at the beginning, you're probably often going to be given smaller projects, but having a really positive attitude, I think attention to detail is extremely important and it's overlooked. Um, and just showing that you're a team player will ensure that you get bigger and better projects. Um, and again, attitudes, everything. DC offices are often, you know, very small and they're uh, very busy offices. So knowing that you have someone that's willing to pitch in on whatever needs to be done, because everything needs to be done in the office, um, will go a long way. So I think, I guess, just to give one other additional piece of advice that hasn't been said, um, I'm going to say that although, you know, offices are often very busy and that can be intimidating, I want you guys to all say that as an opportunity. Um, everyone is always overworked and has some dream to do project or to do list that they never get around to. So as you get to know people, their interests, long-term projects, the office, um, you know, feel free to proactively go up to members of the team and ask if there's things you can take off their plate or if you can start research on something. Um, Cause there's almost always something to be done. Um, and it's definitely a great way to show that you are a team player and also make sure that you're getting projects that you're interested in. Awesome, thanks so much, Susan. Yeah, just to emphasize again, um, I think Susan covered this really well here, just how busy these individual offices are. Um, some of you may or may not know that congressional offices are actually capped for the number of staff that they can hire at any given time, which means that there is always ever expanding work, but the static pool of people who can actually do that work. Um, so just to echo what Susan said, there are always so many opportunities um, for someone who's a go-getter to really just grab the, some of that extra work um, and take the initiative and really learn a lot that way. All right, now I just wanna flag one thing for you guys that one of our speakers unfortunately was not able to join us this morning. Um, so the one role that we haven't had a chance to have you hear from is our LC or S or staff assistant. So it's legislative correspondent or staff assistant. You guys are gonna hear a lot about what LCs and SAs do in other parts of the program, but just to flag that they're uh, one of the people that you are likely going to be working with most closely uh, as a congressional intern. They're usually the folks who are running an internship program and also kind of making sure that the operations of an office uh, go well. They might be assisting on scheduling the members, making sure the member um, gets to all of the places that they need to go and kind of triaging the requests for that member's time. They're also probably going to be running your mail program and supervising you on the phones and other kind of frontline constituent communications. So just a flag that we don't have our staff assistant with us today, but you're gonna get to know them really well over the course of your congressional career. All right, so at this point, you've heard from all the members of your congressional team. And if I could have our panelists turn their videos back on, we will open up for some Q&A. I know that you guys probably have a ton of questions hearing all of this great information. So let's actually start out. We have a great question from uh, Sharonda Adams for Chasney. 
Chesney Sharonda asks, uh, good morning. My question is for Chief of Staff Lewis. How would you recommend interns navigate asking their supervisors to also work on specific policy areas of interest within the office, professionality and impact wise? This is such a good question. We've told you, you know, reach out to people, ask for more work, ask to be involved. Um, that can be a really scary conversation to navigate. So Chasney, do you have any tips for just how to phrase that, when to approach somebody, just any things you've seen from interns that have really impressed you or worked really well? Thanks for, for that question. Um, and I think you and maybe Susan touched on this a little bit. I think um, what's most important in order to, what I've seen um, is in order for interns to get substantive work and don't get me wrong everything that you're asked to do in an office is contributing in some way to a bigger picture um, whether you can see it or not so that's first but in order to get like substantive work or work that you are particularly interested in I think it's really important to do a very good job at what you've been tasked to do um, and and I think you may have hit on it um, what we notice is when you know, dedication and attention to detail and, you know, really good work product comes out of something that, you know, you've been asked to do, be it by the staff assistant who might be the intern coordinator or the legislative director. Either way, um, I think that you have to approach every task with the same vigor, the same eagerness um, to, to do really good, you know, to, to produce a really good work product. And I think that that will help the conversation, the segue into the conversation with your supervisor or your direct report, it'll make it a little easier to come to um, to ask for additional work um, or work that you might specifically be interested in. Um, I think also, you know, um, one of the things that I would recommend or just offer as encouragement is don't be discouraged if the first time you ask to do something or something that you might want to work on that, you know, maybe, you know, the policy team is already moving forward with it or, you know, there's not a there's not room right now to insert you on a project. Don't be discouraged. Keep asking. Be persistent within reason. Um, you know, you, you definitely don't want to be too aggressive or too, um, um, you know, you, you, you want to do everything in reason. And so. I think that doing a really good job at what you've been asked to do is a great way to start the conversation because you won't have to say it, your work will speak for itself. So um, that's, I think that's a tip that I have seen work really well with um, interns, both in my office and, and just on the Hill period. That's awesome, that's such good advice. I'm curious to kind of throw this one open to, to all of you. It has been such a tumultuous year and a half. I know all of you have kind of talked about how the day-to-day -day life um, of a congressional staffer is never the same, but I think especially over the last year and a half, you've all seen some really big changes in um, the types of issues that you're dealing with and in the environment that you're working in. Can you all talk about just kind of how the last year with, with COVID, with January 6th, with everything has impacted your work, just how have you seen that work change over the last year and a half? I can start out from the district direct perspective. The COVID, we were fortunate here, our office was set up that uh, the safest place to continue working was actually in the office because we were in individuals. It's a small office here. So we stayed here. And, and again, it had an impact. Most of the calls that came in actually were not something the federal government could do. Uh, as each state had their unemployment systems basically implode, um, it was more a case, a chance of getting people to the person that could help them. It was a, the traffic cop, so to speak, directing people to the right place. Um, but that also involved a lot more hours. And I'll tell you what, that's where the interns really came to shine because we were actually set up where an intern could be 20 feet away in a different office. I didn't see them, but uh, those calls were important. As I, I mentioned earlier, just somebody answering the call, uh, if nothing else, because they were calling every other federal bureaucracy and you know, everything had to shut down. So that was a key role. And most offices couldn't continue on with the intern. It's just because of our, our particular space uh, we weren't in, interacting with each other. It was almost Zoom within the office in many cases. Uh, but that was key during that period. And, and again, it's a cause us to explore also the virtual intern idea, which we had not before. Uh, this has caused some changes in technology. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of the gray hair here. And even trying to get into this call this morning, I was having a call. There's, there's a real important role. And interns can do that because you've been more a part of it, but understanding the technology and sometimes having to explain it to others, uh, that's key, not just the people on the staff, but also 
that may be calling in. So that's a, a little perspective here. And uh, and again, I'll add right now that seeing people operate under pressure, under changing circumstances, you know, when I can know a, a known quantity, when I'm looking downstream to fill a staff position, it, it makes it a lot easier. And as as the other people here have said, of knowing that you're you 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 you're a dedicated person, you're always trying to contribute to the team. It makes those selections a lot easier. You're a known quantity vice an unknown quantity. So in your own professional development, uh, that plays in here. And especially when things are not the normal, although things are seldom normal around here, there's always a, that's, that's what makes it interesting. That's what makes it fun. But even more so during COVID and obviously all the political things that have been going on as well during the past year. Thanks, David. Anyone else in the panel want to share a little bit about just how things have changed for you? Maybe someone from the DC office, just how, how things were different in the Capitol? I can go. I think a couple things come to mind. I think legislatively, uh, we were a, very, very busy. You know, there were a bunch of the, you know, the COVID relief bills, um, and you know, we were kind of thrown into this remote environment where, you know, I, I couldn't just walk back. You know, normally we're in an office and we're all in one room, and I can kind of glance over to my team and go, "Hey, do you see my email? Are you working on that?" And it suddenly became a, okay, you know, more intentional kind of from my perspective as a manager, having to text them, call them, email them, get a chat, you know, a, a Teams or a Zoom and kind of had to be more intentional about how we communicated and uh, collaborated, um, which I think was a good challenge. And we got to kind of do things we wouldn't normally have done because it kind of pushed us to adapt. Um, but I think kind of the other piece legislatively, uh, and when we did have an intern that they were helping me with this, but you know, I think normally when Congress passes a bill, we pass it, um, you know, we've had a vote, I've helped my boss, we've gone through everything, and I can kind of mentally check off, go like, okay, I did my job, we're good, moving on. But you know, I think with COVID, we you know really had to kind of take a deeper dive at what we were passing, the impact it was having on people. And then how, you know, us as the DC ledge team had to really be working hand in hand with our caseworkers and the district team when it was being implemented. You know, those really kind of nitty gritty questions of, you know, how is this impacting my small business? You know, do I have my, am I getting my uh, EIP check? Um, you know, when am I gonna have to pay my student loans? Um, so I think it really forced the policy team to just kind of get, uh, kind of take, stuff kind of at a deeper level and to collaborate much, much better, um, more cohesively between the DC and the district team. Um, and I think we had good days and bad days, but I think it was a really good challenge uh, that was very different than kind of some of the other stuff that I had gotten to do. All right, we have another question from the chat and this is such a good question and I'm gonna throw it open to whoever wants to, wants to jump on it. So how do you balance professional work and developing personal relationships with the staff you work with? This is so important. We've touched on how just congressional offices are tight, are small, tight knit offices that each one has a totally different culture and a totally different kind of just vibe, for lack of a better word. Um, so how do you and that 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 line between working really professionally and also developing kind of long term relationships with peers and mentors is is it's, it's a fine line and it's easy to kind of fall fall the wrong way off it one way or another. So just team, how do you, how how what advice would you give to this intern? What's worked in our office um, is uh, I've seen interns schedule coffee time um, with folks that they want to speak with, uh, especially if it pertains to a, a, a common interest. So I, I always think that that's a good uh, way to get the conversation started. Just say, hey, can I get some 15 minute coffee with you here about your day to day? How'd you get involved? And that usually gets the process going. Yeah, I was just going to kind of echo that. Um, as far I think so is to I feel like it's a two prong approach for the employer I think that it's important to reach out and create spaces and a comfortable environment where um, interns and employees feel comfortable kind of coming to you um, I think you know asking people how they're doing asking people how their day is going and really interested in, in answers not just it being you know a um, just something that we say, but really wanting to know. I think if COVID has not taught us anything and being in this pandemic environment, like we definitely should be checking in on each other. Um, so 
so that's that that's I think one approach for the employer um, or the staff that is currently there to create environments for um, um, each other, really your colleagues to you know be able to come and and just just check on each other. But for the intern, I know sometimes it could be a little challenging or. Um, it can be, you know, kind of scary in an office or in a space where you're not comfortable or you don't know anyone, you don't know um, where the bathrooms are, the light switches. And so, um, you know, and some people are personable or, and, and outgoing and others are, you know, kind of introverted. So I think that um, just kind of giving yourself a little space and, and grace to, you know, be uncomfortable sometimes in those situations but still maybe reaching out and saying hello. And if you're not a good kind of person to person type, um, maybe shooting an email or, you know, reaching out virtually and maybe setting up a call um, just to connect with people, um, even if it's no more than like 10 minutes. And I think you can actually say that in, in your outreach to staff as an intern, you know, hey, you know, just wanted to talk to you a little bit about your time on the Hill and see how, you know, any best practices you might have and leave it at that, you know, um, something really simple. Don't over extend yourself or overwhelm yourself by trying to make a, a you know, a strong connection early on um, that that type of thing takes time. And so I think you got to kind of just give yourself um, the, the grace and the space for that. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Jasmine and Marvin. That's really good advice. Um, and that actually leads me to something I'm curious to hear, uh, hear from all of you on, which sometimes it's just the tiniest little details that really set interns apart from each other and that will really make an intern stand out. Um, so for example, I'll give you two really quick. One following on that last conversation, everyone's given you beautiful high level advice. I'm gonna take it down for a second. If you're invited out to a staff happy hour, don't be the person that passes out on the table, please. We've seen it, don't do it, keep it professional. The other thing is thank you notes for me. I'm, I feel like I'm super old fashioned, but when an intern uh, took the time after their internship to write us a handwritten thank you note to the team, because like all, everybody on this panel is saying, you know, these staffers really want to help. They really want to invest their time in you to mentor you, to stay as a mentor and a resource for you after your internship. So you just take that moment to just really say thank you. Just take a moment, just, you know, write that card, pull out the stationery, go buy a, go buy a postage stamp. That really goes a long way. Um, we had an intern who not only did that, but also wrote um, a thank you note to our member, just thank, thanking him for, for, the, for the leadership, to, for his staff to take all that time with her. And we actually tried to hire her afterwards. Um, so that was just one of the little things that showed just how on the ball she was. So for everyone else in the panel, any little details that have stood out to you in your time, just mentoring interns, working with interns, what are those little details that might help someone? I don't know, just to piggyback off Anne's advice of something I heard very early on, which I think can sound a little harsh, but I think was some very, very helpful information, especially going to Hill, kind of what you're talking about receptions, that you do have to remember that you're an intern, and if you do fall into an office that maybe goes to lots of receptions, or if people are engaging in kind of office politics with you, make sure that you do not get involved in that. Um, it's a no-win for you as an intern. Um, and I think that was something that I kind of didn't expect to hear, but, you know, as I, as you're on your intern, even very early on in your professional career, um, that was really important advice that, you know, you, you don't want to engage in any of that, you know, be kind, be courteous, um, be friendly, but, you know, never get involved in kind of the office, office politics or office gossip. It's never going to end well for an intern. Big snaps to that one. Anyone <laughs> else? Any, de any little details, anything's really stood out to you, good or bad? I think you have to remember that you are a representative of your office at all times, whether you're physically in the office or you're on social media, whatever it might be, you are at the point in which you get an offer and you accept you are now a representative of that office. And so um, everything needs to be sort of governed as, a, as accordingly to that. 100%. <laughs> I was gonna add in that thank you notes, honestly, I agree with that completely. Um, I have like this little folder that I've kept them in over time and just kind of enjoy looking back. And um, I think that it's meaningful um, to both kind of thank the staff, but also to kind of leave that impact. Um, and then the other thing I would say is, you know, show up on time. Um, you know, I know that kind of sounds silly, <laughs> um, but, you know, I think for me, it really does show that uh, you're a dependable and reliable person. 
and who's making that uh, effort to be there on time uh, or even a little bit early, um, just to show that you're, you wanna be here, you're excited to be here um, and you're gonna be a dependable intern for the office. I wanna piggyback onto what Chazin was saying about the social media piece. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a strange thing, but as I always say, there's only one opinion that matters and his name's on the door. In this case, her name on the door, it may be the case in some districts. And, and, and that's hard to do for some people uh, because especially, as I said, I'm, I'm was at the age where there wasn't social media, now into it. Uh, but um, I'll give my daughter's example about the age of uh, most interns here, uh, very much focused on that. And, and again, it, it's very easy to, because social media is very much opinion based. And, and, and that's a tough thing to do sometimes to pull out of that. I'm not saying you can't be on it, you can't have an opinion, but it's obviously got to be a very neutral approach because 24 seven, what you say may be interpreted as, 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 if, as the face of the office. And, and that's sometimes hard to do, but it's just kind of one of those things we, we all do have to do. And that's not just the interns, that's across the board uh, for all the staffers out there. So I think that was a very good point you brought up. The, the key thing I'm looking for out there that is really appreciated uh, you're right. Thank you notes. Those little things that you, if you read a book on, on, on a how to do how to do it, it's always mentioned, but very few people do. Uh, but that's noted. And, and it's also noted by the constituents. If you get back and do that little bit of extra with them, check in to say, did it all work out as we thought it would or as we briefed you it would. And, and that follow up on the constituents part is really valuable too. And, that, and that's what I see when, when folks do that. But the, the key thing also is just when you see a ball is sitting there bouncing and starting to lose it, pick it up. And, and run with it. And because there's nothing that makes my life easier than a problem I don't have to face. And if somebody comes to me with the answer, here, here's where I recommend. Even if it's not maybe quite the answer that I would have wanted, at least they've took, taken the time to, to work it through and come up with what they think is the best idea. So th those little things are really important and really make things go well in the office. And you become a part of the team very quickly. You're usually a pretty short period for internship, whether it's a long period in the DC office, or just a summer here. So it's tough to be, like an earlier question, how do I be kind of part of the team? Um, it, it really makes a difference. Your energy you put into it will be, you know, it will be the payback to you. It'll, it'll come through. That's awesome. Thanks, everyone. All right. I think we have time for one more question. Right. Last question we have from uh, Giovanna Alves. So we've heard today and yesterday about making sure to ask questions throughout our internship. Do you have any tips on what makes a good question for an intern to ask? This is so smart. Um, I'm happy to go ahead. Uh, so I think just make sure it's thoughtful and not Googleable are my two key things, right? Um, and also, as much as we continue to talk about how, right, you want to show, ask questions, show interest, make sure that it's serving you. So, you know, if you one day want to become a legislative director, ask substantive questions about their career path, how they got there. What should you be building on your resume? You know, just make sure they're thoughtful questions um, and they don't, you know, need to be intended to impress the LD. They need to be intended that you can gain from it because that genuine interest will come through. Um, I know we focus a lot on things that you can do to succeed, but remember, um, you know, we want your success to come in the form of education to you and context that will serve you later in life. So um, I think just thoughtful questions are, are really anyone, is really anyone's looking for. I totally agree with that, Susan. And I would add to that, um, you know, like on projects specifically, um, I think it's always good to ask questions about the expectation. You know, I think some staff are, will communicate that better than others. Sometimes we're communicating something so quickly that we just kind of assume that you got it. But if you didn't ask questions, you know, when is this due? You know, do you want this in a Word document? You know, is you want this in like 12 font? You know, some of those silly things, but just making sure you have that clear. Um, and those are things we, you know, want to answer and want to make sure you have so that when you're going through the project, you don't get to the end and it's not at all what we were thinking um, just because you hadn't kind of stopped to take a moment to make sure you understood it and the expectation. Awesome. Such good advice. Uh, definitely want a plus one to the making sure that you have a clear understanding of the expectation. That is so smart. All right, folks, I think we are at the end of our time today. Let me say one more time, thank you to all of our fabulous panelists, not only for being here with us today and sharing your, your experience and your best advice, um, but also just for the great work that you do in each of your offices. Um, it's not always easy working in a congressional office. We all know that, but just your, your grace and aplomb for not only doing that, but taking the time to mentor the interns who are coming up behind you. Um, really, really appreciate that.